We split up. She said it's over, and I was just suicidal. The only problem that divorce had with us is that we were both seeking the Lord. Now, I'm not going to lie. I love stories like Ty and Shanti Tibet's marriage rekindling, which we're going to discuss in today's video. Maybe it's because I come from a divorced household and any marriage that can be saved is one less divorce out there. And when I saw this short segment a few weeks ago talking about their marriage, I definitely wanted to do a video about it and discuss a couple of points from the video. Like I said, when people stay together, it's always a great thing. And it's something that the Bible encourages in regards to marriage. And we could look at one example right now from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 to 11, which is the Apostle Paul here leaning on things that Jesus said in the Gospels. So you can see here in verse 10, he starts by saying, And unto the married I command, not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from husband, but and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to the husband, and let not the husband put away the wife. So you can see here it works both ways. The wife is encouraged, right, not to leave her husband, and the husband is encouraged not to leave the wife. And if they do separate, the best thing they are to do is to rekindle, to come back. And I'm not making this video to say that there are no grounds for divorce, right? I'm not saying that at all. I've done live streams in recent times where I've discussed this as well. But one thing I always do say, and I recommend many Christians do, who are married especially, is really track and understand and study how God viewed his marriage with Israel. Of all the passages in the Old Testament, I believe this passage right here in Jeremiah chapter 3 in the Old Testament is a prime example. We'll discuss, let's discuss a handful of verses here to show you exactly what I mean. The Lord was speaking to Jeremiah here and he said, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? Right? And it talks about how they've gone up on every high mountain and every green tree and they've played the harlot. They are committing adultery, right, spiritually with these false gods. And it says, and I said after she had done all these, turn thou unto me. But she returned not and her treacherous Judah saw. Despite the Israelites going off into idolatry, God was still expecting them to return to him and be faithful. But notice what happens. In 8 it says, and I saw when for all the causes whereby, right, so everything that Israel committed, right, God says he had put her away and had given her a bill of divorcement. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. So at this point in Jeremiah, we'll read a couple more verses in a moment. God has written them a bill of divorcement and sent them away because of their wicked, idolatrous nature. And after all this, that Judah had done, Judah did not turn unto the Lord with her whole heart, but faintly saith the Lord. So they didn't even return back after all of this idolatry. And in verse 11, it says, and the Lord said unto me, backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. And the next three verses are what I want you to really hone in on in regards to God sending them away and writing them a bill of divorcement. Notice what God says. He says, go and proclaim these words towards the north and say, return you backsliding Israel, says the Lord. I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you. Why? For I merciful, says the, the Lord, and I will not keep forever. So notice what God's saying here. After writing them a bill of divorcement, after sending them away, God says, return to me, right? Not so you can commit adultery again or any of these different kind of things. Not so you can stay in your wicked sins and all of those different kind of things. He says, look, only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against me when you didn't obey my voice. The last verse here, as we scroll down, Verse 14, it says, Turn, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So at this point, obviously, God is saying, Look, return to me, and I will bring you back from where you're scattered. But notice this key part. After writing um, a bill of divorcement and sending her away, notice the language that God still uses for his people. For I am married unto you. And this is the kind of mindset I know would help so many Christians today. Nobody's saying it's easy, just for the record. There are going to be trying and testing times. This is a clear example we're seeing of God Almighty with the nation of Israel. And this is why a story like Ty and Shanti Chabet is powerful because as they speak about their marriage, right, which was damaged through infidelity, they talk about how 
God was working on both of them. They were allowing God to work on both of them so they could be brought back together. But in this segment that I watched, they talk about multiple different things. They spoke about how they brought baggage to the marriage and baggage is always something which can cause multiple problems. I'll play a little bit of the clip for you now and you can hear Tadrabet's wife saying some of the baggage she brought to the marriage. I always knew that God loved me, but I didn't think he liked me oh, because wow. I didn't come his way. Oh. You know, he ordained marriage and I knew that and I understood that and I understood why I was going through so many things because my parents wasn't married. You see, and the fact of the matter is before we're saved, right, as we become saved, we all bring baggage to the table let alone when we now start talking about a marriage. This is why we need to be renewing our mind on a daily basis and allowing the Holy Spirit, allowing the Lord to work through us. A great passage which we can discuss just quickly, two verses is here, Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Notice what it says. Paul is begging the believers here to present their bodies as a living sacrifice, right? And he says, this is our reasonable service. And he says, don't be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed. How? By the renewing of our mind that we can be good and acceptable in line with the perfect will of God. God. So we all bring baggage to salvation and God redeems us from this. We all bring baggage to marriages, right? And God will continue to redeem us from this if we continue to work, right, through the Holy Spirit working in us and convicting us and changing our fleshly nature through the spirit man that resides in us and should be taking control. Now, one thing we need to discuss before I wrap up today's video is one of the reasons why their marriage almost broke up. But before we discuss this in today's video, I want to discuss things which they said were really necessary in regards to rekindling their marriage. There has to be a level of humility to, to understand the other person as well, because right. you just know you're right or you know you're offended mm -hmm. or hurt. It takes a little step back, like, hold on, let me see the whole picture. It takes a bit of humility. And this is one thing you'll learn when you get married, if you're not married already, which is definitely yes, right? It's not always about who's right in a situation. A lot of the time it's going to take humility and grace on both parties accounts in order to make a marriage successful. Now, the one thing Ty Tribbett mentioned in this interview that was a big catalyst for him being unfaithful and his marriage being put on the rocks, you can listen to what he says right now. I was in such a desperate and aggressive pursuit of worldly success. So can you see how the pursuit for success can really damage a Christian walk? And that pursuit for success can stop many people from growing closer to God. And this is just one famous popular example. 